More hero drama. Now, this is probably one of the most controversial characters to ever be released in Smash. So now you might be wondering, what is going on? Well, this video is mostly going to be a follow-up on what the hero situation has been and kind of where we are and where we stand on this situation. So, in case you didn't know, Hero has been in a tremendous controversy because this character has so many random elements that can sometimes just straight up win you the game or lose you the game that he's been deemed a character that is anti-competitive or just pretty much doesn't follow the values of competitive play. So, therefore, this character should be banned, not because he's broken, but because he ruins competition and the integrity of competition with his random elements. Think of it like, I don't know if you guys have played traded card games, but there's been some examples of cards getting banned among clauses like that. But really in a fighting game, we haven't really seen anything like that. So it's hard to even find a comparison like that. But that is like the most random comparison I can give you guys that will make sense. So Hero has gotten a little bit of an update. One of the biggest and largest Super Smash Bros. Ultimate major tournaments happened recently, Super Smash Gun 2019, and Hero was legal at this tournament. Now, there was a huge controversy because most people were against the fact that Hero was going to be allowed at a Super Major. People thought he was going to break the game, break the tournament, ruin the integrity of the competition. Turns out, Hero was allowed at the event, and no Hero player was able to place anything better than 49th place. So the character that everyone was afraid was going to ruin the tournament ended up not really doing anything. So what happened? Well, is Hero a bad character? The answer is not really. Like, what people need to understand is that when a new character comes out, people take time to get better at these characters. Like, when MKLeo started playing Joker, he didn't really win the first couple tournaments. He lost, like, three or four tournaments in a row before he found himself winning a tournament. So I think it's going to take a couple months, probably like two or three months for us to start really seeing hero results. But obviously the character wasn't obviously as easy to pick up and just win with because otherwise we would have been seeing results from the very beginning. A lot of people are using the argument that he didn't really do well at Super Smash Gun to say that he shouldn't be banned. In fact, I will say probably in the very first week, there was a massive hate going around here where like I will say the majority of the players felt that he should be banned. But now that time has went on and people have kind of stabilized around the idea of Hero being in the game and the character participating in the tournament, people feel more okay with him. There's still very big personalities within the Smash Bros. community that feel like he should be banned regardless. For example, Leffen is probably the biggest name in Smash that wants him banned. There's been a couple people that have given good arguments to ban him, uh, but are not necessarily completely pro-ban, such as Armada. But Armada has like a much more complete argument that I, I recommend looking at his entire argument before placing him on one side of the fence or the other. I kind of wanted to give you guys an update to like where we stand in the community because it's a little bit of a certain for a lot of players to invest time into a character that may potentially get banned down the line. So uh, I find really interesting uh, to read articles that kind of came out recently. For example, this article from Polygon came out on August 20, which is a little bit after um, this entire thing happened. And, you know, I'm making this video a couple days later. So it reads on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate newest character, the hero from Dark Quest, might be the weirdest character member in the game. Since his release last month, the Smash community has argued for his place in high level competition. Recently, a group of events in Australia chose to ban him from play altogether. That is true. You know, he still remains banned in some parts of Australia. What's crazy to me is that hero was released, what, at the end of July? But we're still, it's still less than a month into this character, and there's been so much controversy. Regardless, let me just keep on reading this article. This is just a little bit more context for people that are not used to it. Uh, then it says that things get really weird. However, when Hocus Pocus is thrown into the mix, Hocus Pocus produces a random effect. Anything from a super powerful attack to a self-destruct. And each move within the Hocus Pocus pool has its own rate of appearance. If a player wanted to turn invisible, for instance, they will have to be lucky enough for Hocus Pocus to show up in command selection. So like the whole Hocus Pocus freakout, I really feel like it became a big issue because it can have some very degenerate problems. So for example, if we look at a video like this. One. Yeah, as you can see. <laughs> oh my god. What are the chances for both people to because this is the grand finals of a tournament. Not the biggest of tournaments, but it is a tournament on the list. Both people get hocus pocus, which is a very rare chance. That command does not appear every single time. <laughs> he gets slowed down. And then he gets the force smash, and then I believe that force smash crit too. <laughs> oh my god, that guy was so unlucky. But yeah, like I said, uh, Hocus Pocus definitely was blown a little bit out of proportion because yes, while you do get scenarios like this that are kind of insane, the chances of Hocus Pocus appearing are kind of low. Uh, the chances of you getting something amazing like that 
are also cannot out. Regardless, it is still a problem. Hero then adds an interesting layer to ultimate competition. While he's hard to grapple with both to play and as an opponent, his randomness can lead to incredible moments. While the odds of this sequence of events occurring are extremely low, it's just one example of the chaos players must be ready for as soon as Hero steps into the match. That's the thing though, because like a lot, a, a big premise of what Leffen's argument is to ban this character, which Leffen is one of the biggest names in Smash, is mainly the fact that it's not that he's broken, it's just more so that he, the character itself is anti-competitive. And competitors should not have to worry about a hero player getting a mushroom or all these things because they're just completely anti-competitive and in a lot of ways it's kind of similar to just playing with items right which i agree not entirely with but i think there's a lot of merit with the fact that hero has that all that stuff and it, it, it could be controversial like now that we have moved a couple weeks from release hero hasn't really been winning tournaments he hasn't really been as degenerate we've gotten a massive amount of clips that are extremely hilarious about the character but the character hasn't necessarily been running the game as many people expected. I personally think the biggest problem with hero legality is the fact that he doesn't really have the logistics on his side, right? Like, for example, if you have international players, uh, I think they should update the game and add symbols next to the command. So then these can be globally recognized and people have to learn something that is easily recognizable and, you know, straight to the point. Um, so the character can be international play because otherwise you're going to have people come to America. You know, they don't speak English. They're going to struggle to participate in the tournament to find an a hero or people go to japan or if they go to all these other countries it's going to create a mess and it's going to create a gray area where people are going to have issues with the rules because someone's going to say well what if i can counterpick my language or stupid stupid things like that like i've seen some people say that you should be allowed to counterpick language so for example if i'm fighting another hero then i can make the language chinese or something and then they can understand what the hell's going on you know things like that are going to be thrown into the mix because you know the rule set has to be updated uh people have to account for these scenarios that are going to happen this randomness immediately made here a contentious uh fight figure in the competitive smash ultimate community with some even calling perhaps contentiously i think i said that wrong for as bad as soon as here's director must hear Sakura demonstrated hero's techniques during a pre-release broadcast see here's one thing that i really don't like about the smash community is the fact that people have such stupid major reactions like we have uh you know like obviously you'll have you know youtubers like me right make make clickbait videos or whatever you know because it's my job you know to make the videos appealing right but my actual meat and potatoes of the content is that I always try to have very reasonable views about the content, right? Like, it is no surprise that my titles are often crazy on purpose or like caps or, you know, uh, whatever, you know, the, the ooh face on the thumbnails, right? We, you know, I do things like that on the videos because it works, right? It's, you know, it's my job. I want you guys to click on the videos and watch them because that's how I make a living. But like the meat and potatoes of my content is always try to have a... Uh, reasonable is stances towards topics try not to be biased and i really think the smash community has tr extremely knee-jerk reactions like before i even made any type of content people in my twitch chat people in the you know um the twitter verse we're all yelling already for this character to be banned right after he was presented he like a day before he a day before he was officially announced to be released people were already like banned this character because i saw him in the video trailer and he looked broken so whatever ban him you know it's like people are not really willing to i don't know have reasonable stances like hey man let the character come out let's see how he plays out and you know let's go from there because like my perspective has never really been on the fence of let's ban him let's not ban him uh i will say i'm more slightly more towards not ban him but it's not really one way or another completely because my stance is simply a if this character proves to be a problem let's let him participate in the meta and if we see him be you know be ruining the integrity of the competition then let's have this conversation again but like you know simply banning a character in my in my eyes at least banning a character before they really do anything it's just it's restrictive and i don't think it really i don't think it really is good precedent because it's a it's pretty much the problem of a slippery slope because like well if we ban a character before they really even did anything then the next time we have a bayonetta metanai whatever ice number scenario uh then that's gonna get banned right away as well and then it's going to create a pretty much a circle where we're just outright banning things. And I know a lot of people say that we should probably care about how like other communities look at us from an outside perspective. I say screw that because it doesn't really matter. Smash has always been its own kind of thing. And, you know, trying to seek support from other communities is never going to really be it. Smash grew up on its own and it's going to continue its own regardless. But trying to just appease our rules to outside people that are not even going to play them is pretty dumb in my opinion. Regardless. I'm of the opinion that we should let the character stay for a couple months and then we should have this conversation later because I don't really see the argument right now. I feel like the only argument that makes sense is the fact that the character can somewhat be considered to ruin the integrity of competition, which to some degree it is true. Competitors should never have to worry about their opponent getting a super mushroom in the middle of bracket. But at the same time, there hasn't been many high level cases to pretty much see this as a problem. You know, Leffen argues that 
you know, we shouldn't wait for it to happen. We should do it preemptively. So that's kind of where our opinions clash in that matter. Let me know how you guys feel about that topic, though. BG Bookham did a bot, uh, not a bot, but a, a poll recently where they uh, allowed people to vote. And there were like, I don't know, 70,000 votes or something like that. I forget the number. But people were mostly on the fence that they don't want the character to get banned. I feel like people really came around in the next couple of weeks. I feel like the overreaction was super crazy the first two weeks. But now that we're like on the third, fourth week, moving into the month of Hero being released, most people feel like he shouldn't really be banned. Like at least the majority, but there's still like 30, 40 percent. I felt like he should be banned. So uh, let's look a little bit at Leffen's argument here. Yeah, as much as I hate this character, I completely understand why casuals love him. Because casuals love playing with items too. Like, unironically, <laughs> this character alert. is like playing with items on, but more RNG. He's gonna crit. Okay, he did not crit, babe. Regardless, I mean, uh, it, I feel like the majority of the pro players right now don't want him banned. It's mostly Leffen and a couple other people that don't feel like he belongs. But really, it, we're kind of a standstill right now. I mean, to be honest with you, a lot of Smash uh, problems get solved by a well-known tournament organizer. Let's say the person who's running Genesis, the person who's running Evo or whatever. They come in, they say, we're gonna run the tournament this way. And that's, you know, then a whole bunch of other tour tournaments start following uh, through. So, like, it will really take for a big tournament organizer to say that, hey, let's ban the character um, to really do anything. This is why a lot of people say that, you know, top players have a lot of influence or the community has a lot of influence. But in reality, the people that have the most influence and I will say probably the entire influence of how tournaments are played and rules is and all that are the tournament organizers because they get to decide ultimately what stages we play, what characters we play with and everything else. And these tournaments are going to be ultimately the one that the ones that we are going to be, you know, watching these people competing. It's going to come down to that because, for example, while a lot of people really have their entire disagreements about the rule set and the stage list, people don't really do anything about these things proactively. So it comes down to the tournament organizers. So if if there's a ban or not, it's going to come down to how these people feel about it. And from what I understand, from what I've seen them talk about this problem, I don't think any of them are going to ban him. So I personally think this issue is going to be resolved with the fact that Hero is most likely not going to get banned. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be a patch because of all the controversy. Nintendo probably saw all this and they're probably going to do something about it. So I think Hero is probably good to go. To be honest with you, I don't think he's going anywhere. With that said, guys, that's the update on the Hero drama situation. Let me know how you guys feel in the comments down below and uh, I'll let you guys know if it, you know, if any other developments go about. With that said, I'll see you guys around in another video. Take care as always and thanks for watching.